pop it up pop it pop it pop it pop it please don't use like drinking cups as measuring cups like you <laughs> no it's just it's it's not gonna work out Welcome back to my channel. This is Baker Like Anita. If you are new here, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a video sharing all of my baking basic equipment. So all of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I am baking. So this is based just on my needs and the types of cakes that I bake. So if you are really into baking and wondering what you will need in your kitchen or if you're also um, running or wanting to start a baking business like I have then this is the video for you and please do remember to subscribe I'm trying to get more subscribers just so that more people can see the types of videos that I make and please do remember to share with someone that you know or that you think would be interested in the kind of videos that I make <laughs> all right let's get into it baking utilizes a lot of just normal stuff that you have in your kitchen you don't have to go out and buy everything everything that i have now is a collection that i've been building for the last uh four years now actually that i've been baking so just saying be patient with yourself and don't rush to buy everything all at once because sometimes you don't need all of the big um fancy stuff sometimes you just need um, to invest in very few uh, critical things spoil yourself i said listen you got paid his mom and thanks god and if that has happened my man there's a pair of sneakers you want and your budget is tight forget the budget look after your emotions go buy that pair of shoes it gives you positive energy because the world is up against you nobody's gonna look after you gotta look after yourself first thing um, I think that you'll need is obviously a bowl and something to mix with and in. I think the thing with mixes for me is that um, I think it's great if you have a metal bowl. I think that's the only um, kind of thing that I'll comment on in terms of stand mixes. But if you're not at this level yet of baking as a business or professionally, I survived on this hand mixer for a very long time. Now this is a very, very cheap one. I don't recommend you buy a cheap mixer because you're going to keep buying it. They don't last long. Um, and this is a great example because it broke in like within three months of me using it and I mixed large quantities of data. So this is useful for mixing smaller quantities of batter. So this I'd probably use if I'm making like a big occasion cake with lots of icing. Um, and this is useful if you're making like maybe a small batch of cupcakes or just a small cake um, to eat at home with your family. So this is also very useful because it's handy. You can kind of uh, pick it up and put it into different uh, bowls that you're using, whether you're mixing icing here or mixing some dough uh, or mixing I mean not dough um, batter um, so this is very useful and especially for beginners I would recommend you get a Kenwood mixer so that's the only hand mixer brand that I would recommend don't buy something that's like 200 300 rand you rather buy the Kenwood hand mixer that goes for five uh, six hundred grand somewhere around there um, and if you do buy a stand mixer Kenwood also does have very affordable ones I think they start from around three thousand rand for the stand mixer so that's if you're looking to invest but a Kenwood hand mixer is also really great I don't know about any other brands so I won't recommend those I'll just speak on the ones I know and use Otherwise, if you can't uh, afford to get a stand mixer or a hand mixer altogether, that was me actually for a while. I couldn't afford to get a hand mixer, like actually a couple of weeks ago in fact, when this stupid mixer broke 
and before I got this one this was me uh, using a wooden spoon and a bowl so that brings me to my next thing of bowls you need to have like a wide selection of different kinds of bowls I mostly use salad bowls because I don't think that baking mixing bowls look all that exciting like so I'd rather have like you see a red uh, salad bowl as a mixing bowl um, I also have other sizes so these are basically the three different type bowl sizes that I have so this one is for mixing like small amounts of batter not batter icing usually when I'm mixing colors I use these bowls so it's nice to also have these in like multiple bowls that are this size so that you can mix different color icing and then this one is like the normal uh, average size bowl and then this one I usually make the big cakes in if I'm not using a stand mixer because sometimes it's a mission to clean a stand mixer up so you rather just use a bowl then you need a big whisk so I use this one because it fits into most of the bowl sizes including the larger bowl oh these are very heavy so what I like about this whisk is that it fits nicely on top of this bowl here and also it fits well on top of um, any size of stand mixer so you rather have a bigger one than a small one because it won't be enough if you're mixing like eight cups of flour and you're using a tiny tiny um, whisk I mean a sieve so it's nice to have a big uh, sieve um, that you can place on top of uh, a relatively large bowl so that's with that and then a whisk uh, this is a hand whisk um, it's obviously great for whisking stuff <laughs> um, and it's it's nice if it works really quickly you also need uh, a hand whisk and a wooden spoon a combination uh, of these two works really well if you don't have a stand mixer or a hand mixer um, it's really great to have either one of these in fact both of these are critically important I'm actually thinking of getting a tattoo of two of these of these two together anyway so these are great to have this is not the one I actually use this is my wooden spoon for mixing like for when I'm cooking but anyway um, one thing you don't need is an egg separator one of the most unused um, utensils that I have because you can literally use the egg shells themselves to separate the eggs I wanted to say something about measuring spoons um, I found that it's much better to have metal ones I'm still looking for measuring cups that are metal and aren't ridiculously expensive uh, primarily because when you are measuring out flour or whatever it may be it's a lot easier to have either hard plastic or metal so that the shape or form of the actual measuring cup doesn't change according to how much you put in so for example these ones ayapoko so they they kind of do that and they're kind of flimsy please don't use like drinking cups as measuring cups like you <laughs> no it's just it's it's not gonna work out like that's bound to just be disastrous another one of my favorite tools is a kitchen scale and I've recently started being a kitchen scale person. I usually would have used measuring cups, but I have found that it's a lot easier to just have a scale as well because it does have, it measures in grams and in milliliters, and it's usually a lot more accurate than to measure with a measuring cup. But I think a combination of both is really great because of the fact that this is great if you need to measure um, something like uh, butter chocolate let's say a recipe has measurements that are both in grams and uh, milliliters so if it says 350 milliliters of milk and 
I don't know, 800 grams of flour and 250 grams of sugar. You can use this to measure the grams and your measuring cups to measure the milliliters so you can have a combination of the two and it, it will likely be more accurate if you don't keep converting um, using a calculator or using those uh, conversion calculators on the internet so it's a lot better to have both these are all of the loaf the tins that I, wanna, I use this is the cookie sheet that I use for all of the biscuits that I make if you can't find a baking shop near you please please go to checkers the checkers home section is out of this world it is the bomb like it is crazy so i got this tray at checkers um they are relatively well priced and the quality is really good but one thing to look out for um and in general just to i think this is a general rule of thumb that you're gonna have to be willing to pay a huge amount at first well not a huge amount but just a lot at first if you're trying to invest because over and over again and it breaks or um, it doesn't last so just be willing to spend like bit by bit every month just buy one piece or one sheet or one tray or you know um, and then that's how you slowly build up everything you aren't going to miraculously just have every I mean unless you're rich I mean then go ahead but um, yeah, all I'm saying is that just be willing to spend um, so that you don't have to keep spending over and over again buying the same thing. And then these are just normal uh, spring form uh, cake tins. I have four of these because that's usually the height of the cakes that I make. Um, and these are great because they are spring form and they you can literally pop out the cake like that and then this is a what is it tart pan <laughs> this is a tart pan um i'd really like to use this more um especially if i start to bake for shops and stuff like that but anyway so this is a cupcake pan and then this is a muffin pan so this one is slightly bigger than this one because a muffin is slightly wider than a cupcake. I don't know what happened there. Uh, so I like to distinguish between them. That's why I bought the different colors. And then these are for many desserts. I love, I love this tray so much. I love it, it's like fantastic. So basically what these are for, um, is for mini desserts so I like to make maybe like a mini milk tart or a mini cheesecake or a mini brownie pan or the caramel toffee cups that I sell on my website so these are, are great because you can remove this here and just pop it up when you are finished baking so how it works is that you'll bake whatever you want to bake and then once it's cooled you can literally just and you see and you can pop it up pop it pop it pop it pop it so these are really great they aren't they aren't fun to clean i don't know why i did that they aren't fun to clean but they are the best if you're making like mini desserts and you want them to be easily removable so these are also now the low pans these are slightly longer so I don't usually actually use them as much as I like to eat loaf cakes, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, I also got these at Pick and Pay, relatively good quality there, all right. And then this is probably the tray I use the most. This is my brownie pan. Um, you can see the wood there, um, and that's just how big it is. Um, this tray was also slightly more expensive. I think it was uh, 400 Rand um, because it's just a really good brand. It's by Stevens. It's a really good quality brownie pan and it gives me 12 brownies. Um, yeah, and it's, it's never given me any, any issues. I really love this pan a lot. Decorate. It's not a lot of stuff, but 
yeah let me just show you what i use so what i highly recommend is a rotating cake stand and what i normally use is this plastic paddle scraper i also have a metal version of it but this is better for like cutting dough um, so if you're making cinnamon rolls or if you're yeah just cutting any kind of dough this is better for it I haven't really used it for decorating cakes the combination of these two um, is really fantastic for cake decorating so another thing I think you'll need is this paddle um, scraper for like scraping off bits of icing and it's purple how beautiful is it okay so I use a combination of this uh, angled spatula and this paddle scraper and this cake board I think that's literally all you need to decorate a cake I have these heart shaped cookie cutters and this Oh, I don't know where the other ones are, but basically this is a set of three cookie cutters cutters. This is the biggest one um, I would recommend that you don't buy all the cookie cutter shapes in the world because I've got so many Cookie cutters right now that I don't know what to do with think of tools that you are Buying as an investment so you don't have to go and buy everything that I've showed you here all at once But it's just critical to have a few staples that you know you're going to use every single day I think that brings me to the end of this video I hope you did find something useful that you can take away from here and Seeing some of the tools and the equipment that I use on a day-to-day -day basis that can help you um, Starting your baking collection if you're trying to start a baking business or just really into baking and want to know what you need um, I hope you enjoy this video and please comment down below if you have any questions um, or any ideas or some other things that I might have left out that are important for you when you are baking and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Ooh.